Celebrating John McCain's death is good, actually. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. People on Twitter are currently raging because the account for the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire tweeted a post celebrating the anniversary of the death of John McCain, which is a good opportunity to explain why those people are wrong and why everyone dancing on McCain's grave is right. The reason it is good and important to celebrate the deaths of war sluts who facilitated mass military slaughter is because it helps bring clarity and proportionality to the horrors of war. You are making it clear that John McCain's victims matter more than his daughter's feelings. The fact that celebrating the death of war criminals is met with outrage is itself evidence that it's something that needs to be done. If the public is so blind to the horrors of war that politeness is seen as a higher priority, those horrors need consciousness brought to them. If mainstream Westerners really understood the horrors of war, it would never occur to anyone that it's indecent to celebrate John McCain's death. The most important thing for the English-speaking world to understand about China is that it's none of your fucking business. If you live in the U.S. or one of its imperial member states like Australia or the U.K., you should be focused on attacking the criminality of the empire. All this neck craning and pointing at China's COVID policies or whatever from people who live inside the U.S. centralized power structure is like someone making a big deal about hearing their neighbor raise their voice to her children while he himself is busy murdering his own family with an axe. The belief that Western noses belong in Chinese affairs is the product of propaganda. Let China do China. We live under the most powerful empire that has ever existed, which is led by the most tyrannical regime on earth. That is where our focus belongs. I'm becoming more and more disdainful of people who live directly under the thumb of the U.S. empire and yet spend their time criticizing nations like Russia and China. It's literally the most pathetic, sniveling, power-serving position that anyone can possibly take at this point in history. Focusing one's criticisms on the most powerful and destructive government on earth is the sane and normal thing to do. It's not strange and suspicious that people like me do this. It's strange and suspicious that more people don't. Well, you never talk about the good things America gives the world. Like what? $400 million superhero movies? Yeah, keep supporting U.S. foreign policy, American progressives. They'll definitely give you health care any minute now if you just hate Russia and China a little harder. Everything that passes for the left in the English-speaking world is either controlled opposition, a glorified online hobby group, or both. That's not our fault. The Empire poured vast amounts of wealth and effort into making that happen. But we need to be real about it. Democrats rehabilitated George W. Bush out of political necessity. If you don't turn him into a cuddly, wuddly old painter who hates the far right and frolics with Ellen DeGeneres, you can't support Democrats like Joe Biden who backed all of Bush's most evil actions to the hilt. The U.S. Empire continually behaves the same way from year to year regardless of who's president just rotating out the actors who play the role, like James Bond or Doctor Who. The UK could have had Jeremy Corbyn. Instead, they're getting empty refrigerators and frozen homes. Until a few years ago, Russian propaganda meant media created by the Russian government to facilitate the information interests of the Kremlin. Now it just means any media that criticizes the foreign policy of the most powerful empire that has ever existed. People sometimes tell me I'm a grifter who only says what I say for money. Yes, yes, everyone knows this is where the real money's at. Promoting an extremely marginalized perspective online while being called a Kremlin slash CCP agent all day. Nobody has ever gotten rich promoting mainstream perspectives. You learn very early on doing political commentary that the easiest way to go viral is to say something that agrees with broadly supported sentiments in one of the two mainstream political factions. Most people succumb to the temptation to do this. The rest get called grifters. <laughs>